we're going to break digital audio into two separate videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at more of the geeky aspects, the behind the scenes aspect of digital audio. In the next video, we're going to take a look at it more from the consumer point of view. So let's jump into digital audio. Digital audio is any sound that has been digitized. Again, this word keeps popping up. We've heard this word pretty much from lesson one all the way through. Digitize means that we've taken that analog signal and turned it into a digital signal. So for example, my voice right now, where I am, is coming out as a sound wave. Imagine little waves coming out of my mouth. It's hitting a microphone. This microphone connected to the computer. It's being turned into digital information. And so again, digital audio is sound that has been digitized. There are some terms that we need to be aware of to understand what digital audio is, and that would be sampling rate, bit depth, mono, stereo, and surround, and recording formats. Sampling is the actual act of capturing the analog sound waves and then turning them into digital data. This is the actual digitization. So sampling is taking the sound and capturing it. And how many times per second a sound wave is sampled, meaning how quickly we capture that information is known as a sampling rate. We measure it, measure it in thousands of cycles per second, kilohertz. Low quality, meaning really bad quality audio, which really isn't captured very well, low quality is about four kilohertz, while high quality is around 320 kilohertz. And so we have a range between really low and high. Obviously, the higher the sample rate, the better the sound quality is going to be. The more of a representation of what it really sounds like it is. Bit depth is a measure of how many bits are used to store the music sample. This is the number of characteristics of a particular sound for each sample. What we're talking about here is how much information we're storing about that sound file. A 16-bit is your typical CD. If you think about CDs and how you know you listen to music on CDs, 16 bits is pretty good. This is CD quality. 24 bits is what DVDs and Blu-rays will use for their audio sampling. So this is where you get into your surround sound, your really rich sound from your movies. The next one, which we'll talk about actually in more detail in the next video, is mono, stereo, and surround. We'll actually take a look at speaker configurations for stereo and surround. But right now, know that mono is one track of sound. When you're recording sound, you have a left channel and a right channel, and we're simplifying this. You have a left channel and a right channel. So for example, I just got done shooting a short video last week, and we had two separate boom mics. And one boom mic was one channel, and another boom mic was another channel. And so we had a left and a right. Mono is just one track of sound. It's just one side that you can hear. Stereo is two tracks. You have a left and a right. And what you're hearing from me on this video should be kind of a stereo because the microphone is recording both tracks. I have other microphones that record one track. For example, I have a lavalier microphone which records one track and I have to kind of duplicate that sound on the other side so it sounds like stereo, but it's in fact the same sound from both sides. Surround sound gives you 360 degrees all around you. So for example, if you're playing a video game, and let's say you're playing a FPS, a first person shooter, and you're hiding somewhere, you're, you're about to stalk somebody, you're gonna snipe somebody, and you hear footsteps. If you're in mono, all you hear are footsteps. You have no idea which side it's coming from. If you have stereo, then you have an idea if it's coming from the left side or right side. With surround sound, you go, okay, it's coming from over here and walking this way or going this way around. So that's what surround sound is. Recording format, how we actually digitize the information. What are we saving it as? And we have two types of ways to save this. We have lossless compression and lossy compression. Loss less is the lack of losing anything. What we're seeing here is we save the file size as it was originally made. We're saving the sound as pure as it is, as pure as possible. These files can get incredibly big because there is no compression, 
but you get the true nature of the sound. Lossy compression is where we're compressing the sound. We're sacrificing quality in order to save space. Now, how much quality depends on the format you use. If you want to get, um, you know, really crush down the sound, obviously you're going to lose some of the sound quality. In fact, one of the amazing things about MP3s when they came out, we'll talk about file formats in just a second. When MP3s came out, we had the ability to compress sound pretty effectively to a very small size and retain a lot of the nature of that sound. This was kind of a game changer when it came to recording music. And, you know, the music industry was crying out, oh, you're going to ruin the music. Just like the video industry cried about VHS. You're going to ruin the movie or whatever. All right, let's talk about the file formats. These are, by the way, there's tons and tons of file formats. Here are the big ones that you're most likely to encounter out there in the rest of the world. We have the AAC. This is an advanced audio coding. This is a native format for Apple's iTunes. So if you're using Apple's iTunes, chances are you have the AAC. OGG, yeah, you know me. Anyway, OGG, this is an open source audio compressing codex. This is the open source um, version of MP3. If you go to Wikipedia and you go to Wikipedia Media, you find a lot of their audio files are saved as OGG files. And then we have MP3. MP3, like I said, was the, was the game changer in saving music files. It was what allowed us to have MP3 players. It was allowed us, allowed us to move away from your CDs to online music, basically. It's the most common sound file format used today. It, only, it eliminates parts of sound file that humans are not supposed to be able to hear. I've seen this go both ways. I've seen people say and experts say that MP3s, yes, they get rid of the sound we don't hear, but emotionally we hear it. And another group saying it doesn't make a difference. We get rid of stuff that you can't hear. No big deal. But it does eliminate the, the spectrum of the sound that we are not supposed to be able to hear as humans. The next one is the uh, Real Media Player, the RM, the Real Audio. This is a proprietary format developed by Real Networks, and you need Real Player to use this. Wave Format, this is a standard format used mainly by Windows PCs. It's commonly used to store uncompressed audio files. This is CD quality, and these files can get absolutely humongous. So, for example, if you rip a song, ripping is taking a song off a CD and putting it on your computer. If you rip a song, let's say a five-minute song, well, we're not in the 70s anymore, let's say a three-minute song, an MP3 file will be relatively small, while a WAV file is just absolutely ginormous. And finally, the WMA. This is a Windows Media Audio. This was created by Microsoft. Okay, in the next video, we're going to take a look at digital audio production. This is more of the consumer side of your digital audio.